more from tree pollen than grass pollen. Oh, that's interesting. There's a distinction. Yeah. I did not know that. Thank you. Yeah. Well, let's get more on those high pollen counts and those distinctions with GP Dr. Fari Ahmed. Lovely to see you in person. We've, we've exchanged a few times over Zoom, haven't we? But yeah. it's great to meet you properly. And um, can I start with a very basic question? What is hay fever? Okay, so hay fever is an allergy. It's your body reacting to pollen. So, you know, like he was saying, you've got uh, tree pollen, grass pollens, um, and they come into your body, you know, through your nose and your mouth and your eyes, and your immune system recognizes them as something foreign and it overreacts to them. And that's why you get the symptoms of hay fever. So, so it's a form of protection. It's your body trying to do the right thing to look after you. It's kind of overprotection. So it's almost an overreaction to it. And that's why you end up getting the symptoms. And what can you do about it? Because it can really blight people's lives. The puffy eyes, the runny nose, the closed throat. It's not an easy thing to live with, is it? No, no, certainly not. And it's one of those things, isn't it? The sun comes out and everybody else rushes out and everybody with hay fever thinks, oh, I'm not sure I should be doing that. So a lot of it is, you know, the things you can do. So knowing that the pollen count is high, then you'd probably avoid going out. Make sure you keep your windows closed. Um, when you go out, you can put some Vaseline and things around your nose and that can stop, it can get the pollen to stick to that so it doesn't go in and cause a reaction. Some wrap around sunglasses can help protect your eyes. When we were wearing masks, masks were working well for some people to stop um, the pollen going in. Um, you can take um, treatment for your symptoms as well if you need to. Um, so there's lots of things you can do um, to try and make it a bit more Livable, livable. With. But for people who take antihistamines regularly, are there any side effects to that, or is it okay to just keep taking them? So antihistamines work well for most mm. people with um, hay fever. There's like roughly two types of antihistamines. There's some that can make you feel sleepy. They're like an older type of antihistamine. The newer types tend not to make most people drowsy. Um, so it's, and you can often get them from pharmacies, even supermarkets and places sell them. If you're not sure, it's always good to go and speak to the pharmacist, so you can take those. Some people, if their hay fever is more severe, they might need nose sprays or eye drops, um, and those you can also get from the pharmacy, and you might need a combination of those. A key question though at the moment, how do you know it's hay fever? <laughs> because there's various strains of coronavirus yes. as well as all of the usual bugs going around, yeah. more so at the moment because we've mm -hmm. been isolated for so long. How can you say for certain that it is hay fever and not something else? Yeah, so it is tricky. It is yeah. tricky. I think a couple of the things, so if you don't normally get hay fever around this time of year and you'll recognise, okay, your symptoms when they come back. Um, normally hay fever, even though it's called hay fever, you don't get a fever. <laughs> with hay fever. Um, That's helpful. But, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and if you are getting a fever, then you know, you'd be thinking, is this something else? Could this be COVID? Could this be another virus that I'm So the fever is the giveaway. Yeah. And, and can it come and go? Because I've heard people saying they felt like they had hay fever for, for a period of their life, but they never had it for, as a child. And then it went away again. Or if you've got it, is it consistent? So some people end up, you know, growing out of it. Right. Some people can, they might have had it when they were younger and then they have a, a period where they're not exposed you know they don't seem to have those symptoms again and then I've had some people who've been developing it later on in adult life so yes it can very much the, but there is hope that it can go what yeah. a shame for people who can't go outside when I the know. sun comes out got to keep I the know. windows shut windows shut yes I know when you just when you need everything open and you need to go out um, and you know when people are mowing grass and things like that yeah keep your windows closed. You and can keep get listening to Darren because he's got the pollen warning yes that's good advice isn't it yeah and um, thank you very much Really interesting. <laughs> I didn't know there were different types of hay fever reaction. Yeah. Um, Dr. Fari Ahmed, thank you for your time this morning. And yeah. as I said, lovely to meet you in person. Thank you. Now, seven in bed now with a cup of tea. Oh, look at that. <laughs> now, you're, you're winning on Sunday, <laughs> Emily. Roll. You are winning at Sunday. Thank you very much. That was uh, Harriet Pryor there from the Anfield Rap and Man City supporter Emily Brobin from the King of the Kipax magazine. Right, Stefan, I think... You need to listen in on this next item because I think you might be interested in this, okay? Okay. So, the bank holiday, as we know, has brought some, some exceptionally great weather. But it's not so much fun having this great weather if you suffer with hay fever. Oh, preach, Laura, preach. <laughs> the warm weather bringing with it, obviously, high pollen counts. Now, Dr. Fari Ahmad is a GP based in Cheshire and she joins us now. Good morning, Dr. Fari. Morning, Laura. Morning. Now, I, I will put you know, 
all all out on the table now. I haven't got hay fever, so I don't know how debilitating it is. So first of all, tell our listeners who are maybe like me, who have never had hay fever, what are the symptoms like and how bad are they? So um, hay fever is uh, quite common. It's about, I think, one in four people have it and you can have a whole range of symptoms. So from red, runny eyes, a streaming nose, sore throat, tickly cough. Some people can get a bit wheezy, especially if you've got asthma and things. Some people can feel a bit tired and they're not able to do what they normally can do. Um, for some people, it can be quite debilitating. Mm. Um, like, you know, it's tricky going to school and work and then hay fever coincides with like, you know, GCSE exams and A-level. So for some people, it can get really tricky. Why, why does it seem to be so particularly bad at the start of summer around those times that, yeah, are really important to people just at the time that you're trying to do the best you can in an exam, for example, and you can't see your paper in front of you? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Um, so what happens with hay fever is um, it's pollen that you overreact to. So your immune system um, recognises pollen and it thinks, oh, this is something I need to fight. So it overreacts to it and you get the symptoms and you feel unwell. And, you know, when does pollen start coming? You know, uh, the season starts, you know, around about March, anyway, from March till October. You know, of course, if you have an earlier summer, it, it can vary with that. So, yeah, it's just bad timing, isn't it? Mm. In terms of where you find pollen, is there any places you should stay away from? Is it grass? Is it just big green areas? Or does it really affect everywhere? There's no hiding from it, basically. <laughs> Sometimes it might feel like that, but it depends. So there's different types of pollen. So at the beginning of the season, it tends to be tree pollen. Then later on, you get grass pollen. And then later on in the year, the weeds um, start contributing to it. So some people um, can have a reaction to all three. Some people, it can just be the trees. So it'll be earlier on in the year. So I think Going outside does increase your exposure to pollen. So being indoors, doors closed, especially when you know the pollen count is high, mm. that can help. Stefan, you have hay fever, don't you? Yeah, I tell you what, it's the tree pollen, I think, that gets me. I was just listening to that now because it's this time of year is, is especially bad for me. Turns out if you're on top of a roof re-felting a shed <laughs> that's <laughs> stood next to a tree, that's not fantastic for somebody with tree pollen. But it, but it is, it's interesting. How it's those different times of years. And I suppose it's, it's about knowing... Um, when you're especially affected, right, Dr. Ahmad, and then taking the steps at those certain times of the year. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. So, yes, trying to avoid felting the roof. <laughs> when... <laughs> you try telling that to my father-in-law, Steve, <laughs> when he's brought his tools down. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I don't think I have a cure for that. But, um, no, and, and it is, you know, so knowing that the pollen count is high and trying to, you know, work your activities around that. So there's certain things you can do. So... You know, sometimes if it's your eyes that get affected, you can get wrap around glasses. Some people, you can put some Vaseline around your nose and that can, you know, catch some of the pollen particles. Um, some people found masks helpful when they had hay fever. Um, and there's treatments you can take, um, you know, antihistamines, there's nose sprays, eye drops. And sometimes people need a combination of those, but they can help you get through this period. Can I ask Dr. Ahmad, because the the guidance has changed recently in terms of the symptoms of COVID. Mm. And we had that, those nine new symptoms, didn't we? Was yeah. it last week or the week before? And some of those symptoms are actually very similar to the symptoms you've just described. So, um, you know, runny nose, you know, feeling bunged up, all those sorts of things. Um, is, is that Has that been something you've seen? A lot of people come to you and, and raise questions about, about that. Um, so, yeah, and I think you, we're seeing actually not just hay fever now and, and COVID, but lots of other viruses seem to be, the numbers seem to be going up and that's probably because there's more mixing and, you know, people are living um, out, you know, indoors without masks and things. So it is tricky and sometimes, it, you know, you think, oh, could this be hay fever or, or is this the start of an infection? I think an easy one to do is if you've got a fever, then it's not hay fever, even though hay fever has fever in its name. It's one of the things that you don't get a fever with. Um, and if it's something that happens you around about this time of year, most people who've had hay fever will recognise, ah, oh, this is what happened to me last year. So um, sometimes it's trickier and you might need some help to try and work out what's going on. But I guess mm. that's what you speak to your doctor or your pharmacist about. Yeah, that's really interesting. I'm just reading here, again, I have never had hay fever, so I've never had to put any of these into place. But I'm reading here about the honey hack 
Okay. And, and where you eat local honey to help your symptoms. Is that real or is that a myth? Oh, it sounds good, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> and and you, can, you can understand the theory because, you know, if you've got pollen in the honey and you expose yourself to pollen, then you won't get this overreaction. But I think the evidence isn't really there. Okay. So if you like honey, hey... You know, go for it. Go if, for if you're it. feeling a bit bunged up and, and all you think of is a bit of honey might help you, then then go for it. But it's not actually going to help you, is it? No evidence yet, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Dr. Fari Ahmad, GP based in Cheshire, uh, who's been talking to us about hay fever. I wonder if any of our listeners have any uh, have any good ways of getting out of yeah. Any tips, being, please? Yeah, any tips what about? Have you got? The, the Vaseline tip that uh, Dr. Ahmad said there is interesting. Yeah, getting oh. some remedies or, or things to stop you from being so badly affected by hay fever. You can get in touch with us, 85058. 